This is KGW News at 5. First at 5, the surge in coronavirus takes Oregon to new dreadful heights. Thanks for joining us. I'm Pat Doris. For the third day in a row, Oregon now has set a new one day record for new cases. Today, health officials reported 1,509 new cases. That beats the old record set yesterday of more than 1,300, which beat the old record set the day before of more than 1,200. You get the idea. The virus is spreading quickly. Here's where things stand tonight. Hospitalizations, thankfully, down a little bit. The latest data available shows 412 people are in the hospital with COVID. Seven more deaths, sadly, were reported today, bringing the statewide total to 819 since the pandemic began in Oregon. The surge brought prudent but also chilling action from Providence Hospital, setting up temporary morgues in case they're needed. The company is also setting up surge tents outside its emergency departments. You will see those at the largest hospitals. That's Providence, Portland and St. Vincent. Providence says it's a worst case scenario, but after seeing other hospitals around the country run out of mortuary space, they believe it's important to prepare now. Governor Kate Brown issued new restrictions last week to slow the spreading infections and deaths. The so-called freeze includes limits on social gatherings. But these are polarized times and we're hearing from some politicians who say the restrictions and plans are way too much. Knocking on somebody's private door and saying you have too many people there. No, absolutely. That, that's insane. And, and there's no way it's not it, it's not just that it's not constitutional. It's not even common sense. Governor Brown signed an executive order that makes the restrictions enforceable with arrests or fines. Our Maggie Vespa asked her if that means people should call police if they see their neighbors skirting the rules. This is no different than what happens if there's a party down the street and it's keeping everyone awake. What do neighbors do? They call law enforcement because it's too noisy. That, that could be a yes. Yes, yes. The governor hopes it does not come to that and that people will follow the restrictions voluntarily. Oregon State Police and other agencies have said they will take an education first approach to these complaints and try to avoid penalties. Well, the freeze is hitting restaurants hard, allowing only takeout orders. And now the Oregon restaurant industry is taking the governor to court. The freeze bans both indoor and outdoor dining in Oregon. The president of the Oregon Restaurant Association says the outdoor dining ban goes way too far. He says re restaurants are laying off servers again, and he says some small businesses will not survive. For some, it will be the nail in the coffin, so to speak. Others will be able to hold on by those fingernails and, and hopefully uh, find a way to, to get to the other side once that vaccine is widely distributed. We need a better explanation as to why indoor and outdoor dining is completely banned while we're still allowing people to gather in private households uh, at this stage in the fight. Uh, the private households have been proven to spread the virus more prolifically uh, than controlled restaurant environments. He said the goal of the lawsuit is to encourage state officials to come up with a different approach to better protect the industry and its workers. The Oregon Health Authority is changing the way it counts COVID-19 tests after we revealed they were not counting people who came back for multiple tests over time. It had the effect of lowering the number of tests the state reported each day and roughly doubling the positivity rate. That's an important number that's used to decide when schools can open and when businesses should be restricted. The OHA said they have used infectious disease computer systems since the beginning of the pandemic and that those systems count only new people getting tests, not total tests on a daily basis. That means if someone got a test in October and was negative, then got another test in November and was negative, that November test would not be counted in the daily totals. The state will now count every test every day. KGW exposed the problem Wednesday. The OHA announced the change two days later. When we recalculate our historic positivity rates using the new method, Oregon's test positivity rate drops significantly. It goes from a shockingly high rate of almost 13% to a merely alarmingly high rate of nearly 7%. When the percentage, while the percentage is lower now, it's still above the level that would indicate declining spread and a safe level to fully reopen schools and businesses. The OHA said they believe 60,000 people each week are getting tested for the second time or third time or more, and we're not being counted under that old system. 
Switching topics now, we're seeing today the extent of the damage after groups vandalized buildings in both downtown and northeast Portland last night. Businesses on Northeast Sandy Boulevard were targets of the rampage. That's where a group of about 100 people smashed out bank and grocery store windows and sprayed graffiti on the buildings. You can see that there. Police say 27 businesses were damaged. At the same time, another group downtown spray painted the Mexican consulate and the Multnomah County Courthouse. Mayor Wheeler condemned the destruction in a statement saying, quote, to those participating in violence, I want to be clear. I denounce your actions. Law enforcement will do everything possible to find you and hold you accountable. We all agree racial justice is past due, but I absolutely denounce this violence and criminal destruction. So far, police have made no arrests. And now to the Oregon coast, where the state's most valuable fishery faces a setback. Commercial Dungeness crab season has been delayed. As Crystal Kumwe tells us, they face two very big problems. Crab season typically runs from December to August, but there is nothing typical about the year 2020. I think my husband has worked the least amount this year than in all 26 years of our marriage. <laughs> That's because the pandemic hit restaurants worldwide and the demand for crab fell significantly. We Melissa Clemens' husband country, is a commercial so crab fisherman in Charleston so on the southern Oregon coast. When this all first started going down, we really didn't think it was going to affect the commercial fishing industry all that much, you know, because those guys are out on the boat. And so it really, you wouldn't think that it would. But it did. The processing plants were not selling as much overseas, so they bought less crab from the fishermen. With few buyers, the fishermen were stuck at home. They looked forward to the opening of the season, but then came the news they hoped wouldn't come from the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. The season is now delayed till at least mid-December to give the crab a little more, bit more time to uh, fill out and uh, become really high quality. Tests found crabs needed more time to grow. I think I could probably pretty um, much speak for the entire fishing industry <laughs> when we say that we never count on it happening December 1st. The season has been delayed for the past several years, either because the crabs weren't big enough or because of something called demoic acid, which is bad for humans. We haven't uh, seen big issues with demoic acid so far this year. We'll be, of course, be continuing to test any areas of concern. Um, but good news so far on that front. There's a chance the season could start on December 16th, but that problem with the pandemic and restaurant is still there, and it's unclear how many people will be buying crab. It's unclear exactly what the impacts will be, but um, certainly expect that that to be a discussion amongst the processors and fishermen uh, when they're talking about setting prices and, and bringing crab to market. Back on the southern Oregon coast, Clemens hopes the season will start soon. Families are getting desperate. You know, we filed for unemployment in March on my husband and we waited 17 weeks to see a dime. And if we did not have any savings to live on, I mean, we would have really been hurting. I mean, if they start on time, if they start December 15th, most of these guys will be lucky to see a paycheck before Christmas hits. I mean, that's just how it falls. Four years ago, Clemens and others formed an organization called Charleston Fishing Families to help fishing families during hard times. This year, they are helping dozens of families with COVID relief, and that includes gift cards, meals, and even brand new toys for kids this holiday season. We have more information about the nonprofit at KGW.com. I'm Christelle Kumway for KGW News.